Hi folks. Okay. Um, as promised, I'm going to do a, a really, really great fly. Um, I was playing with this new fiber just the other day from Jerkbait Mania. It's actually a brush um, and I'm going to be making one of these beauties. Very lightweight and very large. Really, really like that. Um, it's got a good profile on it. So, but ultimately very light. Okay, so brushes. Um, these are from Jerkbait Mania and it's a new one that they're doing. Um, and I'll show you the, the pipe brushes that they usually do. If you've used brushes before, you'll, you'll know that usually the brushes like this, um, you can make a whole fly out of that, no problem. Um, but usually what we do with these is we, we tie the, the materials in like the pike skins and then we'll use that um, as kind of your last little bit. And you can tie that around the head, gives it a nice flash. That's your normal standard kind of pike brush. Um, again, that's pike skins, crinkle brush. Uh, 100 millimeters, 100 mils, millimeters. I'm rubbish at lengths. Okay, so the new ones that Jetbay Mania are doing, which I'm actually quite excited about, uh, and I really hope they do a whole new lot of colors um, because looking at these and tying the fly the other day when I got a couple of packs from Chris at Jetbait Mania, uh, very, very, very impressed. So this is a new one that he's doing. Um, it's a it's a hybrid brush uh, which basically incorporates uh, Chris's pike skins um, with some really nice flash. Again, quite quite densely packed, but not densely packed enough that you're going to get too big or bulky fly. But you're going to get something that looks like a bigger bulky fly, but with less weight. Which obviously cast you can cast these. You know, I'd cast that. On a, on a nine weight all day, you know. And again, it won't feel like casting a wet sock. Uh, I, like, I like to use these big eyes on these. Um, the reason for that, the, these big, like heavy eyes, is when you actually strip them back, and if you strip back and pause like this, and then strip, pause, what it does, it goes like a jerk bait in the water. Um, there, there is actually some videos uh, on YouTube that I did uh, some years ago down on the fens, uh, and it shows kind of the flies in action it was boarhead flies at the time and it shows the flies in action with these big heavy eyes and they have a great movement it is literally like a jerk bait um, in the water so this is the beast we're going to be tying with and show you what we can do with it a very quick easy simple fly so what i'm going to use is size 70 Sakuma Manta so hook in ready to go so a basic mono thread and what I'm going to do is tie that in where the hook point comes out to there you're looking to tie that in about halfway along so pretty much just about on the Sakuma Manta where the, the barb of the hook is. And we'll get a few wraps round. Okay, after tying one of these, I found that um, if, if you want to get your fly quite neat at the head and how you're tying this, you'll need to, if you tie like I tied that one, uh, it was just an experiment at one I was doing, when the fly ended about here, so I want to get right up to the nose. So I'm just going to tie it a little bit in and not right to the back of the hook shank there. Right. Okay. So again, the old varnish. Again, I do this just to kind of two proof it. Because once that dries, solid, no teeth going through that. Okay. So then you kind of decide in what length you want this. So I'm going to go pretty much to about the back of the vise there. What I'm going to do is just separate the fibers. And 
I usually use an old pair of scissors if I'm cutting these. Uh, using an old pair of scissors because you don't want to knacker your really, really good ones. These scissors, by the way, I got from uh, Deer Creek. Um, they're for synthetics. They're really, really good. Um, like a hot knife through butter with synthetics. I really like them. But like I say, if you're cutting wire brushes, then obviously you don't want to be using your, your best ones. Okay, so quite simply, that's going to be your tail section. Quite mobile. We're just going to lay that on top of the hook. And a few wraps round. And already you can see that's taken on a really nice body shape. If you can see that. That has actually taken on already a nice body shape. Which is ultimately what we're looking for. A good meal for the fish. For extra security what I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit of glue around that. Two reasons, uh, just to give some extra hold to the wire and then with this you can tie this on top of the glue like so and that's going to be bomb proof. Going around the, the glue is actually seeping through that so you're going to get a really really good good hold. So there's your brush. Okay, so if you take the, the tip of the wire and just bring it round, what I do is just kind of pull the fibre back. And just wrap around, pull the fibre back. As you're wrapping around, just slightly in front of your last wrap, pull it back. I really, I really hope that there's, I've not actually checked on Chris's site, but I really hope there's some other different combos out there. You know, I think, um, you know, doing like a, kind of like a silver and black might be good, quite good, black and green. I'll check the site later and just see if he's got anything on there. But these brushes, I believe, I might be wrong, don't quote me, I think they come in at probably a couple of quid a piece for these. But they are really, really good. I mean, if you think, you know, if, you, if you're buying pike flies, you're gonna be paying like, like up to a five, six quid for a fly. I've even seen some pike flies in Glasgow Anglers Centre, or the Edinburgh Anglers Centre, believe it or not, at like 10 quid? I mean seriously? 10 quid for a pike fly? Come on! Anyway, that's a different story, I'll go into that just now. Okay, I'm just going to bring my thread forward a wee bit. I'm just on the last wrap just now. Okay. Oh. If I can find my... Oh, there it is. Been used a bit. These brushes actually also take colour very, very well. So, what I'm going to do is just put that down and I'm going to put the camera down for a sec so you can see what's going on. I hope you can see that. Okay, so we're going to just give it some back. Again, you don't need to be an artist to do this, I'm certainly not. Just run your pen along. Again, you can use any colour, you could use black if you wanted. Um, give it a black back. I just, I just think this is quite a nice kind of pikey colour. Uh, the brush that he's done, it's kind of yellow and gold. So give it a nice bit of a bit of a green back because you know the old uh, big pike nothing they like more than chomping on a smaller pike. So we're gonna just give it like that. turn it over. Just 
just with a thick end. Go like that. Again, you can use any any kind of colours for the back if you want. But it does take the, the marker pen particularly well. And the great thing is you can actually still see, even though you're using a, a, a marker pen on it, you can still see the flash coming through that. And somewhere in here, I believe I have a... I did have a red one. There you go. I found uh, out of all the markers, the, the pro markers, the lecture set ones uh, the best ones because you've got two sides. You've got the very thin one there for fine work. And then you've got the thick end there. Which you can, which is really good for putting like red gold plates on or red flashes or what you like. I found as well that using these they don't, they don't fade in the water. Again, like I say, you don't need to be any kind of artist to do this. A lot of the time with the flies, if you're confident on what you've tied, nine times out of ten, you'll catch fish on that. Right, so that's the, the red in there. If you wanted to, although you really don't need to, you could thin that off a bit if you wanted, but I really don't think there's a need for that because the camera up does help. Um, like I said, you could you could thin that out with the scissors just by giving it a, a wee cut on the sides. I don't think there's any really any need for it because it's quite a thin, there is not a lot of material on that, believe it or not, although it's got quite a good profile on it. And again, hooking wise, you've still got most of the clear gape there so hooking is not going to be a problem even though because I mean that in the water is going to thin down a bit anyway but it's a beautiful profile so for the eyes we're going to go for what I like which is the, the big the big hard eyes okay, stray material So with this I'm going to go for big dark eyes. These are uh, 12 millimeter. Okay, I'm just going to clip a little bit. I like to leave, as I've said before in videos, I like to leave a little bit like that for the epoxy to stick to. Uh, it just gives you a little bit of extra security. Okay, I'm now going to mix the old Z epoxy. Great stuff. You don't need too much. You can I use the uh, the thirty minute because I tend to uh, tie batches of flies, and then I'll do all the eyes at once. So I'm just going to mix that up. Place is falling apart. Okay, that can mix pretty good. Okay. Again, first lot of epoxy, we're just going to push it through. Just right into the, into the core of the fly, and that helps you with some extra weight, which ultimately gives it that action. So 
you know, just pushing the tip of the dubbing needle into the fibers. And this is why I like to use 30 minute as well. Don't be shy about pushing that epoxy through there. You get a good firm hold for your eyes. Good. A little bit left over epoxy and I'll stick that just up the nose just to secure everything up. Your tooth proofing. Push the eye on. Just wobble it a little bit so it gets a good firm hold in between the fibers. Okay, and that's it. Um, what I like to do, I like to go back to it as it's drying and just push the eyes in like that. There you have a pretty damn cool fly. That will catch fish wherever you go. Thanks for watching again.